It was undiagnosed anxiety. It was low self-esteem. I didn't feel like I had enough articulation skills, enough intelligence skills, enough social skills. And for me, drugs and alcohol made me feel empowered, erudite, that I could handle any type of situation. But what I didn't know was that it was slowly devolving into a trapped vortex of addiction. The losses, loss of self-respect, loss of business, loss of family, uh, painful consequences along the way. Early in my legal career, I was on a fast track from staff attorney at legal services to assistant state's attorney at the local prosecutor's office to private practice. Growth was rapid, success was quick, and the rise was fast. You know, I, I wanted more, and I wanted it more quickly than the next man. I was pretty hard on myself pretty driven to succeed. And the closer I got to success, the more fearful I became of failure. But that became unsustainable because of the vortex of addiction, the drinking, the hiding, the failure to accept that it was taking me somewhere I didn't want to go. It got to the point where Drinking just wasn't enough, and for me, drugs provided the boost to alcohol. When I knew that I was trapped in the, in the vortex of addiction, the downward cycle of addiction, I knew I had to go get treatment. I will never forget the day I accepted help, the hopelessness, the loneliness, the anger, the fear, the deep gut rage. The bottom was my gift of desperation. And I spent nine years in eight different drug treatment programs trying to find myself. Uh, I spent time in primary treatment, uh, sober homes, uh, looking for support. All of those travels were looking outside of myself for what was in me all along. What was in me was a spirit of overcoming, but I needed help. I couldn't do it alone. Then I finally got clean when a choice was given to me to either lose my son or lose drugs, but I had to lose something. I decided to lose drugs, and whether I believed I could or whether I believed I couldn't, I knew I was right. The process of coming out of addiction and starting sobriety was very meaningful. Uh, I made it personal. I made it a mission. Uh, as much as I did to get high and get drunk, I did that to stay clean. Well, today is St. Patty's Day. And it's ironic that on March 16th, 1998, I hit a can of beer in the bushes outside of the detox and I walked into the detox around 11 o'clock that night. I woke up the next morning on St. Patty's Day, the day the rest of the world appears to be getting drunk. And that little voice was talking to me. He was saying, hey boys, you crazy? Let's go get drunk one more time and we'll come back tomorrow. St. Patty's Day taught me that I could get through revelry without drinking, and that I could deny the voice that was encouraging me to get high. Ironic that my sober anniversary is a day that it seems like the rest of the world is drinking. The St. Patty's Day makes 21 years, 21 years of not drinking, not drugging, not smoking, but being kind to myself and making meetings to stay clean. There's no shame when you've 
let, uh, been a uh, part of that journey. If you walk your recovery and your sobriety and your clean time with integrity. I became president of the NAACP. I was elected five times to the Florida House of Representatives. And then I was elected by the voters of Hillsborough and Pinellas counties to represent them in the Florida Senate. I practice law with the Rubenstein Law Firm and they support me in my public service. But I would not have a chance were it not for sobriety. I've visited jails and spoken to those uh, going through recovery and rehab. I've visited treatment facilities. I've visited emergency rooms of hospitals. I've talked to community leaders, providers of drug treatment and mental health services. I've shared with so many people my story because they tell us in the program, if you just take the cotton out of your ears and put it into your mouth and listen to others' struggles, they'll tell your story. So I share every time I get a chance. To those who are fearful, I understand it. I was the kind of addict that wanted to understand why I needed to change before I changed. I had to turn that around and dumb down and change first, then understanding comes. So I would say to those who are struggling right now, reach out. You were unafraid to drink to the last drop. You were unafraid to ingest drugs. Be unafraid to embrace sobriety. Be unafraid to embrace clean time. Love yourself enough to give yourself a new chance.